this is Fee and welcome to my little bit of a bake, baked caramel cheesecake. What you're seeing here is uh, four sheets of elf foil uh, being cut off. This is so it goes underneath my springform pan. This is I use this for uh, water bathing a cheesecake to prevent thermal shock. Thermal shock in a cheesecake is when it's taken out of the oven too fast it will split and crack at the top by putting it in a water bath uh, it prevents this and uh, standard process with a baked cheesecake if you don't water bath it is to do six generally it takes six hours in the oven if you don't want thermal shock to happen but a water bath I can take it out of the oven straight away so what I'm doing here is a quarter of a turn I wrap it up do a quarter of a turn, I wrap it up, quarter of a turn, wrap it up, quarter of a turn. The, oops, excuse me, sorry, coffee. The biscuit, the tray is uh, spray oil and corn flour, which is ultra fine flour, generally used for making custard. I find the finer the flour, the better. And because I'm baking with butter in my base, I use oil on the uh, greasing. If I was cooking with oil I'd use butter to grease the pan because I just find that they don't bond together it makes it easier when taking it out. Okay so set that aside. At, uh, what I will say while I'm mucking around here so I'm first time I filmed this so still trying to get work my way around it so this one will not be a good one as um, in, in the way of ang camera ang angles because while I work it out. So butternut snap biscuits, chocolate ripple biscuits and 100 grams of butter and the butter needs to be melted. So I, don't, I chop the butter up, put it in a coffee cup and put it in the microwave to melt. In a cup it prevents, it, it's less chance of it spraying out we all know when we put butter or margarine in the um, microwave, it pops. The coffee cup just means um, it, it doesn't. It's, it doesn't spray as much. Still got to wipe the microwave out afterwards, but yeah. Okay, so the chocolate ripple butternut snap cookies. Standard. The original recipe used to call for one packet of the butternut snap cookies. Um, however, I found that the Thermomix cuts it up, crushes up really fine. So I've added three. Uh, sorry, I've, I've added chocolate ripple to the recipe. Uh, I do, however, not put in a full packet of chocolate ripple. I take out. Um, I don't put in set, uh, I think one row I don't put in what I did do though is so I normally I put the butternut snap in and then I put the rip, chocolate ripple in um, because I don't use all the chocolate ripple and this time I've turned around and I've put the chocolate ripple in and then gone to put the butternut snap biscuits in and then realised that um, you see me actually stop and pause a second Watch, wait for the pause and I've just gone oh bugger because I've put a full tin full full thing of um, chocolate ripple in so I just swap them out it's seven biscuits if, if, you're, if you're counting I counted them to make sure it's seven biscuits um, so I put all of those in save those biscuits those biscuits go behind me uh, and Nathan the Hoover in my life um, will come along and he will eat them in one go. So remembering that th this is filmed in real time so in the thermo mix put the lid on and you see it do a quick burst bang and that is the length of time it takes now they'll take the lid off, that's the length of time it takes to crumble those biscuits. So they're so fine, which is why I need to do more than one packet of biscuits for the biscuit base. 
Okay, go on and grab the butter. Pour the butter in. And as you can see here, that my camera's starting to film horribly. Um, I did cut out some bits, but I still need to leave some bits, even if they are a bit jerky, for you to be able to see what I'm doing. On goes the uh, lid and another quick burst. Doesn't take long and biscuit base is done. And here we go, the jerky footage. So the biscuit base is all cooked up or all mixed up, blended together. So I grab the spring form tray and I pour the base in. What you can see in front of the biscuit base, in front of the pan now is two glasses. The small one has a curved edge at the bottom. The other one is um, a bit angled down and in. I use the big one to flatten the base and to put push the base up the sides. You see the initial flattening of it. And I'm so sorry, I will apologize and I'll probably keep apologizing because I'm so frustrated with this recording. So you can see there that I'm pushing the base down. This is now pushing the base up. So I go around and push it up all the way. When you use biscuit base, um, sometimes you find that the very, the corner, the bottom corner of the biscuit base of the cake is thicker than the top. There is a way around this, which is that little glass that you can see there because of the shape of it, I push it in to the bottom. I make the, I use that to push the bottom base down again, but I also push it around the edge. So that then it curves and the biscuit base at that very bottom edge isn't as thick. So the next thing you can see how that's curved in at the very bottom, that gives it, that, that then means you're not getting that big chunky base at the bottom. Okay, from there I put the biscuit base in the fridge. While I mix up my uh, cream cheese filling. All this time now I've got the oven at 160 degrees, 160 degrees Celsius. I should convert that to Fahrenheit and I will calculate it. So what I'm using is cream cheese, which is 750 grams. And this first time I've used this, I normally use um, cream cheese that's in the silver box, but I thought I'd give um, this one a go because it's an Australian product as well. Uh, okay. And I struggle with these tubes, so I'll probably go back to the silver one unless somebody that's watching this has a um, unless somebody has a good way of opening these tubes up, please let me know, but I struggle to open those tubes up. So that's that just does not look good going in there. And I've just looked it up, 160 degrees Celsius is 320 degrees Fahrenheit for anybody that um, is uh, wanting to convert that. And here we go, yet again, farmer's table, made in Australia, farm fresh, cream cheese. Now when you bake a cheesecake, all your ingredients need to be room temperature. Just yet again, it just, one is it mixes better. But if you put it in cold into a, an oven, it does give it the higher the risk of a thermal shock. All my baking that I do, I have everything brought to room temperature. Um, just something that I found 
I think I was reading of when I started making cakes I, it was something that I discovered somewhere along the line where somebody said room temperature is the best way to bake or mix your ingredients with and uh, there we go I've just shown my grotty hands because I was getting it out of that tube and I struggled with so I'm off to wash my hands excuse that noise that was actually me on the on my bench okay so that is 750 grams of cream cheese room temperature <clears throat> and what I'm going to do with the Thermomix is blitz it with the blades only what you can see behind there but that I initially put down moved is the butterfly the butterfly doesn't go in initially the blades have a fair workout cutting down cream cheese and if you can imagine um, a fruit in a food processor it takes quite a while this is really quick in comparison to a food food processor I give it a bit of stab to give it a bit of um, help and if you can see in there it's now blitzing and real time recording this is not slowed down it might look like it um, but that's real time recording so now in goes the butterfly and I try and find the hole so I get it sitting in there properly back goes lid and there we go a bit a bit of a blitz with the thermo again okay so next sour cream full strength 300 mil my belief is if you're going to make a cake what is the point of putting diet stuff in there the low fat and the lights and sugar free seriously you're baking a cake you, you're going to enjoy it yeah. five minutes on the lift uh, on the lips five years on the hips isn't it this is a very very rich cheesecake Okay, so out comes the cream cheese in one big, the sour cream in one big blob. And goes a lid. Give it another quick mix. And it doesn't take long. Does not take long at all. That's all mixed up. In goes half a cup of sugar. I'm trying to get it to sit so you can actually see it where it levels to show half a cup. I think is that half a cup is four ounces something like that I don't know so back push that down into just to help it get right down into the base and on goes the lid give it a quick blitz and then I'm putting three eggs and I put the eggs in while it is mixing I don't stop it from mixing and you will see the machine does slide around on my kitchen bench there a little bit but yeah three eggs one at a time and because it's continually mixing you know this it's not a stop start so don't stop your machine don't stop mixing while you're putting the eggs in if you're using hand beaters um, you're gonna have to stop unless you can crack eggs with one hand uh, but if you're using hand beaters it's going to take ages to get it done okay so it's all mixed lovely speed of the camera and I'm pouring in the cream cheese mix into the base which was in the fridge what you do is you fill that with three quarters of the biscuit but uh, three quarters of the cream cheese mix and then you dollop in the caramel top and fill caramel top and fill is basically um, condensed milk that's caramelized if you can't get caramel top and fill get a tin of condensed milk and it needs to boil for two hours condensed milk can turn into caramel after being boiled in water for two hours but caramel top and fill is a lot quicker 
So with it being the cream cheese only being about three quarters up in, you dollop in the cream, the caramel top and fill. If you go only halfway with the cream cheese mix, all that caramel will drop to the bottom. So you need to actually keep it fairly high up. But that's it with the dollops of caramel. Yum, 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 yum. So now I'm topping it off with the rest of the fill, making sure to cover all those dollops of caramel. And I also have it sitting in my glass baking dish. So the glass baking dish is what I used for um, the water bath. Okay. So water bath, the water that goes in is hot water straight from the tap. So that then it's already got the heat around it before it goes in and goes into the oven. Um, and yeah, I mean, yet again, mentioning it, thermal shock does affect cheesecakes. The water bath just prevents that thermal shock. <clears throat> so I'm pouring in the hot water, both sides to make sure that both sides of the baking dish have got water in. And then from there, it goes into the oven for one hour. So one hour in the oven and the time will go just so quickly for you guys. And ta-da, out it comes, all nice and brown on the top. You'll see me mucking around here a little bit. What I've got underneath the where I've just put the baking dish, I've got a cake cooler cooling rack. And underneath that is a hand towel and that hand towel is very thick and obviously a cutting board which will deal with the heat from the uh, cheesecake if you were not doing a water bath the way to pull a cheesecake out of the oven is you turn the oven off open the open the oven door a little bit and let it sit for anywhere up to an hour to try and get it to room closer to room temperature thermal with the water bath, I'm able to take it directly out of the oven while it's still hot. Okay. It's still too hot where I can't touch the L foil. So I'm just pouring out the water out of the baking dish. And putting it away. What you can see at the top of the screen is my tablet, which um, I used to film this with, and my program, although it's the same program on my computer, um, is giving me no end of grief with the filming not being smooth. So this will probably be the last time I use the tablet to film with. But what I've done now, I've pulled it, I'm pulling the alfoil back. I'm just trying to get this in a better position for you to see it better. I've pulled the alfoil back and there is water in that alfoil which is why the hand towel is there. The alfoil is yet again to protect that baking, the, to, to protect the um, cheesecake base so the water doesn't get into where the tray, the springform um, container joins. If this dish wasn't in a spring form, I wouldn't need to do the old foil, but cheesecakes have to be done in a spring form. So here we go. And you see I get my fingernails underneath the lip. I don't put my I can't put my fingers on the on the baking on the cake tin because it's still too hot to touch. But it hasn't cracked, it hasn't split. So just rolling up the alpha there, which has got quite a bit of water. And I tip that out. Okay, so there is the cheesecake. Ta-da! How does that look? It's really firm and it's still warm to the touch. And 
giving it the big thumbs up because it's turned out nicely and it goes into the fridge and here it is out of the fridge <laughs> so this is like 10 hours later I've taken this out of the fridge and it is set solid so the process of taking them out of the spring form can, tray can be a bit fun but I take it off the plate I try and get this camera position better for you what I was doing there is just rounding it and getting my hands on it and there we go I've still got water on the butt underneath the cake it didn't get into the cake in itself into the biscuit base but that goes to show you you know there's still water <coughs> around which is why you need to protect your cheesecake so much with um, the oil foil okay so what I do from there now this is really cold now what the best way to get something out so cold is to actually warm the outside a bit you can get a damp cloth and microwave it for about 30 seconds and rub it with that I'm just using a standard tea towel um, I haven't warmed it up but you can warm it up it just might helps with that biscuit base coming off I'm too impatient to wait for that to come to heat up so just a rub even does it okay so what I'm doing now is locating the spring form the the, um, the holder the, the catch that I need to release and then the where it joins that is the point where I want to put my knife in when I do my foot when I push it first in because that is where um, there's just a slight difference in size I suppose I don't know I don't know the best way to put it but you find that with that lip by putting the knife in at that point you're not going to be jarring on that lip so that's your starting point always do it away the furthest away point because then you can put your back into the pressure because you do need a lot of force to break this open break it open to slice it I don't know how do you put it but you can see there <laughs> I'm actually realizing how close I am to getting something into that cheesecake base to cheesecake at the other end um, okay so you're pushing this knife around it's I've got one spot there where it's thicker so I'm just trying to work my way through that and then around and around and around and around and I go around twice because that makes me if you only do it the once and you don't get something and you'll see that it gets caught there is a spot that just needs that extra push again if you didn't go around that second time uh, you'd find that that bit would still be stuck on so you want to make sure that you've gone right the way around and it's all free I put the knife in where I where I where the spring file opens just a little habit I don't know just something I do and then that's loosened off and you can see there I'm spinning it I'm not spinning the cheesecake I'm spinning the round bit that gives me yet again another com confirmation that that is no longer stuck to the sides and you can see there's a little bit on the edge but nothing major um, and I think that's because I use oil in the sp or spray oil in the when I grease proof it because the base actually has butter so they don't bond together okay so that's it out of the pan it is still on the base so next step is to that's my plastic container that it's going in it's going to come off of that onto that tr white tray and the process of 
getting that base off the is, is really easy it's just the knife in between the cake and the grease proof paper did I mention that I didn't mention that I put grease proof paper on the base of the um, when I set when I grease the pan there is grease proof paper or parchment paper baking paper I do put that on the bottom that's required for this step okay and I just simply lift it up it is firm enough to lift up to take that paper off the knife has loosened it enough and then it goes onto the straight onto the um, cake tray or in my case the container that this fits in just picks up by the corners and drops into my cake container that I take to work so there we go baked caramel cheesecake I've got the recipe will be at the back but it is butternut snap cookies two a pa one packet two thirds of a packet of chocolate ripple and 100 grams of butter uh, and then the filling is 750 grams of cream cheese 300 ml of sour cream half a cup of sugar and three eggs and then the caramel top and fill which is dolloped into the cheesecake mix but only after the cheesecake mix is about three quarters of the way up so hopefully, hopefully you have enjoyed watching this um, as much as I enjoyed baking and making the video and of course eating it. I did take this to work. Um, new crew that I'm working with. So I baked for them for the first time and they loved it. So there it is on its, on its tray. You can see the two handles on the side. That gives me the ability to just lift it up and place it in the plastic container so thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed watching this one there is more um, they won't be all there won't be a lot of them but I will be doing quite a few um, sporadically as I bake um, just so that then um, you just see what I do with my baking um, my partner loves it when I bake work loves it when I bake I changed crews and my old crew my boss from the old crew was not happy that I was baking for the new crew um, but I'm only with that new crew for three months so thank you very much for watching I really appreciate it and rolling credits at the rear with the recipe details um, yet again 100 degrees for the 160 degrees for the oven or 320 Fahrenheit for the oven and it's in the oven for an hour so thank you for watching and bye for now